Good morning, Facebook. How you doing this morning? I am over here uh, dealing with two devices, <clears throat> and we're going to get started. Um, it's been a, a couple of weeks now, and I wanted to come over here just to have some dialogue with you. Hey, Eve, what's going on today? How you doing, hon? I have some things I want to talk about, and... Um, I'm trying to double flip this camera over here on this other station. And if it don't work, guess what? We're going to stop that one. Oh, here I go, right here. Um, I wanted to come over here and share a few things with you. I've been wanting to come over and have dialogue with you probably now for about two weeks. Ever since um, the election. <clears throat> and I'm just going to get started. Good morning, everyone. My name is Marky lemons Rowell. I'm a social media speaker and Facebook Live host. I am the child of teen parents. At some point in the past 46 years, both of my parents were addicts at the same time. Uh, my mother's drug of choice was heroin and she was addicted for 15 years. And my father basically has been an addict my entire life on and off. But there are things that my parents taught me as an addict that has given me life skills. So let's reference this. My mama was cold, okay? Um, she made a way out of nothing. And so what I want to talk about is what two dope fiends taught me. Uh, the very first thing was don't ever use drugs, okay? I knew by the age of six that I would never get high in life because drugs will ruin your happy house, okay? I knew that at six. I declared it by the time I was six. I am not going to be a dope fiend because this is some pure D garbage. Now, my mother did not start using drugs until I went away to college, okay? I left, went away to school. She was one person when I left. She was someone different the next year that I came back home, okay? But let me tell you what two dope fiends can teach you. The first one is nothing in life is cut so thin that there aren't two sides to it. I say that because every black person in America isn't poor, uneducated, living in the slums, okay? Also, every uneducated, Caucasian, rural American who decided to go vote isn't a sexist or a bigot, okay? So let's just get this straight right now because I'm hearing prejudice comments come from both sides, okay? I'm black, highly educated, and there's been an abundance of money my entire life, okay? Just like I know plenty of white people living in rural America who will invite me into their house right now. Heck, I hope they in the South Side give me some black eyed peas and cornbread, right? And they will treat me like I am family. So let's get this, oh, everybody who came out to vote was a bigot or a sexist. That's first. So nothing in life is sliced so thin that there aren't two sides to it. Hey, Tanya, yeah, baby, we're going to heal today. The next thing that my dope fiend parents taught me was how to make a way out of nothing. I'm hearing a lot of people talking about they getting ready to leave, getting ready to do all these great drastic things. To hell with that. It is time for us to buckle down and figure out how we're going to make a way out of nothing. So I got two little stories I want to tell you. Um, I bought my first building at the age of 24, okay? Um, it was a three-flat brick building. My cousin Tanya, she's on here. She lived in the garden apartment. My grandfather, who was legally blind, lived on the first floor. My mother lived on the second floor. I lived on the third floor. Uh, the building was my mother's building. It was in my grandfather's name in an irrevocable trust to my mother. And my grandfather decided he was tired of my mama and he sold it to me, but she had to sign off on it. So I live on the third floor, uh, Skylar and I, Hey, what's going on over there? And, um, we used to keep our doors open to our apartment because it's a family building. So I'm in my kitchen one day and I had like a 3,000 square foot apartment, three bedrooms, two baths, full dining room, sun porch, you name it. And I'm in the kitchen cooking, but something says, look down your hallway. And when I look down my hallway, I see my mother exiting 
my apartment, her shadow. And instantly I think to myself, why is my mother in my house? And I didn't know it. She ain't call upstairs. She didn't announce herself. And I said to myself, what did she do? I went to my bedroom. I went in my purse. And my mother had stolen $20. So I instantly come back to the front door because I hear my mother exiting her unit. And I call down the staircase. I said, hey, where you going? Where's my $20? And my mother looks upstairs and she says, one minute, I'll be right back. Now, I know this is some BS, okay? And so I go to the front window <clears throat> and I call out the window from the third floor. I said, bring your ass back here with my $20. She says, I'll be right back. All right. So now I'm pissed because you didn't came into my house. You've taken my money and I'll pay the mortgage. All right. Not only did I pay the mortgage because of her addiction, I paid all of her bills. Okay. So my mother didn't even go to the mailbox. I would come into the building. I had her key to her mailbox, my key to my mailbox. I got all the bills and I paid them all. Okay. You're going to come into my house. And you're going to take my $20. So I decide I'm going to sit on the top landing. Because when this heifer, yeah, I called her a heifer, walk her ass back up in here, we can ready to have some dialogue about my $20. So my mother comes back, uh, 10, 15 minutes. I'm sitting on the top landing, and I am hot as a firecracker. So I tell her, I said, let me explain something to you. You just stole from me. I said, now I don't care how you do it, but you're going to give me my $20 back. And she tried to deny, I said, go on somewhere with that. I said, either you're going to give me my $20 back or I'm going to have you arrested. And by the time you post bail, you will not have a home. I am going to put you completely out after I have you arrested. Now, one thing my mother knew about me, I wasn't joking, okay? I have been the parent my whole life. And so she tell me, okay, now I give her a time limit because I want my money that night. And I think I might've gave her two hours. I said, if you don't have me my $20, we're going to have a problem. Well, two hours have passed. My mother calls me. She says, come down here. I got your $20. Now I don't know how she got my $20 because she ain't been nowhere, right? I walk into my mother's uh, apartment and my mother had excellent taste, Okay. My mother is sitting at the table of her $10,000 dining room set. All right, go get this. And she has taken all of her change jars and she has poured all the change out on the dining room table. And my mother is sitting there rolling me $20 worth of pennies. Now, mind you, she had quarters. She had dimes and she had nickels, but she was pissed at me because she didn't stole my money. I caught her, right? But she know that if she don't give me my money, I'm calling the police and I'm putting her out. Do you know that my mother repaid me with rolled pennies, $20 worth? And when I sat there, I said, oh, I can't, <laughs> I can't have the quarters. I can't have the dimes. You're going to give me $20 worth of pennies. She said, yeah, I'm going to give you $20 worth of pennies. I looked at her. You know exactly what I did. Give me my damn money. I took it, put it in my T-shirt, and I walked back upstairs. And then the next day I went to the bank, and I had them count my pennies so I could get my $20 back. A dope fiend will make a way out of nothing, all right? Be clear about this. It wasn't no obstacles. I don't even know. How I would have come up with the $20, okay? But she rolled me $20 worth of pennies. Oh, it get even better, all right? Because this is the insanity I had to deal with. When y'all talk about me smiling, and I even had a friend one time, oh, Marky, you don't know what hardship is. Just because you got money don't mean you don't know what hardship is, okay? Yeah, I know. I'm smooth and tender, and I don't look like what I've been through. But dealing with Hazel and William Lemons... Baby, it'll give you a whole new imagination. It ain't nothing you can't overcome when you see an addict clean themselves up. Believe me, you. So the next one, right? Because this is, this, 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 I'll be honest with you. This shit is crazy, right? And so the 
the next thing, and I got a bunch of stories. I'm only going to give you two today, okay? Um, I was wondering why, hey, everybody, I'm going to answer all this stuff, right? So check this out. I'm wondering why my mama always going to Home Depot, okay? So let's go back 10, 12 years ago. Um, my mother would get up every morning. So let me, let me clarify some things. My mother didn't start using drugs until I was 18. She had a 15 year addiction. She died clean. Okay. Um, but anything and everything that could get done for her to support her addiction without being a hoe, she did it. So my mother never had a man lay up, none of that. My mother, she got up every morning, went to work at the same time, came home at the same time. You could really set a clock by her. Okay. Um, so she was a high functioning at, and she was freaking smart, okay? So, I'm trying to figure this thing out, right? This whole Home Depot thing. Well, once my mother got clean, she told me what the deal was. My mother would run down here to Ida B. Wells every day, and she would line her up a few fellow drug addicts. Now, here were some stipulations to the rules. You could not have been to Home Depot more than three times with your government ID, because this is why. My mother would go to Home Depot. She would buy a toilet. Now, I don't know why the hell somebody buying toilets, but she was buying a toilet every single day because the cavity of the toilet is empty. She would turn the toilet, have a box cutter, and cut the box open, she would find the most expensive, smallest pieces in all the Home Depot, and she would stuff the cavity of the toilet. She would turn the box back over so that the cashier could just scan the code because the cashier didn't want to lift the heavy commode. Huh. She didn't want to lift this commode anyway because it was probably four or five times more heavy. And then she would roll out of Home Depot with her paid receipt for a toilet with probably about $2,500 worth of stuff inside of the cavity. And then she would go back to Home Depot with her recruited drug addicts from Ida B. Wells, and they would return the items at the max that Home Depot would give them either for cash or for gift cards, and they would sell them, okay? Now, even on my best day, I don't think like that. But she made a way out of nothing. Do you hear me? Today in America, based on everything that's going on, we got to figure out. We got to develop a dope fiend mentality. Now, I ain't telling you to do none of the unethical stuff, right, that my parents did. But it's the frame of mind. It's a dope fiend frame of mind, okay? Because I learned a lot from two dope fiends. I have coping skills because of two dope fiends. I have a vivid imagination because of two dope fiends. I don't get high because of two dope fiends. I'm not an alcoholic because of two dope fiends. I know that there's a God every single day because of two dope fiends. It is time in America that we develop a dope fiend mentality and over to overcome all the obstacles we are enduring and an about to endure okay because one thing i'm clear about especially based on dave Chappelle the other day i didn't know you could say pussy and i'm just gonna go on and drop it for you nigga on national television without any repercussions where they do that okay so just for all my, my black folks out here get mentally prepared because you getting ready to be called a nigga the question is how are you going to deal with it now, I'm going to be honest with you. I'm not throwing no rocks at the penitentiary. I'm not going to nobody's jail because you called me a nigga. You can call me a whole lot of things. And you can call me a nigga as far as I'm concerned. I'm going to tell you what you better not call me. A fat ass bitch. You call me a fat ass bitch, I'm going to whoop your ass. Okay, let me tell you that right now. Nigga, I'm going to let you pass with it. Because just like dope fiends have a mentality, nigga is a mentality. All right? And just because you ain't black don't mean you ain't acting niggerish. Anybody who calls somebody else a nigger is a nigger themselves. I don't care what color you are. All right? And so, with that being said, I let all my energy go today. 
when you see me on the street, understand this. I got a dope fiend mentality. I'm going to make a way out of nothing, all right? And if you like your life, don't call me a fat ass bitch, okay? That's all I got to say. And you and I, we going to be who? So I'm going to end my broadcast over here on Twitter. I'm going to come back because I know that uh, a lot of people have had something to say over here on Facebook. And I want to see what we've been talking about. Hey, Calvin York. I, yeah, baby. I know you know. Yes, baby. There's a God. And you know what? I'm going to tell you some of the stuff that I live by to help me uh, get through this. Your girl, yes. The life of al -Anon. I had to go up in there and do my confession too, baby. Yes, because guess what? I was powerless and I needed to surrender. Uh, in addition to that, uh, got my good old Course in Miracles over here popping off, right? Uh, I got my abundance journal. Hey, when you dealing with two dope fiends, baby, you got to, whoo, you got to come with it. So I'm going to sum this up by saying this. Uh, my mother passed away in 2006 because of a ruptured aneurysm. And uh, it, it she died over the course of a week. And all I wanted to know from the doctor, which is shameful, is what did the tox screen say? That's what I wanted to know. I wanted to know if my mother was getting high at the time of her death. And when the doctor told me we found no drugs in her system, it was like it lifted a burden because not only did my parents teach me all those other things through their addiction, it also taught me that a person can get clean and stay clean until their death. And as the child of two addicts, it was probably the greatest lesson in life that after a 15-year addiction, after losing everything, and I mean my mother lost everything. She lost that $10,000 dining room set she was sitting at. She lost the furniture from the sun porch uh, that was on Knott's Landing. She lost the $1,700 sconces. She lost the pink silk rocker chair that she got from Merchandise Mart that was originally $10,000. My mama, she understood how to live and live well, okay? She's lived in Europe and South America, all of that great stuff. I'm the only kid who went to Iceland in 1986 with not one, but two pieces of Gucci luggage and Norma Kamali and all my clothes came from North Michigan Avenue. So I, I don't want no empathy because life has been good. They taught me some lessons about overcoming obstacles, how to make a way out of nothing that even the best of parents have never taught their children. And what I'm clear about, I am their greatest creation. My parents love me more than they've ever loved themselves, okay? And so with that being said, if you're dealing with somebody who's an addict and you see me out here on the streets and you just need a hug, tell me you saw this broadcast and I'll give you a hug because I understand what it feel like. Uh, I'm going to read these comments. Rock Bottom will teach you some things about yourself, won't it? And I have lost everything, not once, but twice. Them comebacks be good, though, baby. I'm on that comeback now, and it is freaking phenomenal. Hey, Jackie, what's going on? Hey, Gina, uh, learn through adversity. Preach, girl. Uh, little girl who knew. I am so, yeah, a lot of people didn't know. Like, people say they didn't know that my mother was an addict. Now, my mother didn't become an addict until I was 18, and a lot of people did not know that she was an addict. Yeah, it's a lot to deal with. And my father, not only was he an addict, he was a four-time convicted felon. And so from the time I was seven until the time I was 21, my father did four bits in uh, state penitentiaries. And after the first bit, I told him then. I said, hey, look, I was seven. I said, don't come back to jail no more. I don't like jail. I'm not coming to visit you. And I never willingly went to visit him again. The last two times he went to jail, I didn't see him his entire incarceration, all right? So I don't do jails. You hear that clink, clink at Menard or wait, what, 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 one of the penitentiaries? I'm like, oh, I've been to Menard, Vandalia, you name it. I've been to all them. Uh-uh, we're not doing any more prisons. Hey, what's going on? Humble hustling, you got it. Hey, Lupe, what's going on? Nice wig. I guess you're going to say nice hair, honey, because you know this ain't no wig. Uh, real talk. You right. Real talk. Uh, 
I'm glad it helped you out, Karen, girl. Hey, Eve. Now, Eve, you know these stories because you and I was together, baby. Yes, we've talked raw and uncut. You're right about that. I wasn't going to bring it any other kind of way. That's why it took me two weeks because I didn't even know if I really wanted to share all of this <laughs> with you guys. Um, transparency is key for me. Uh, sometimes when people see, I, I know I'm judged, right? Because I am generally, as I always say, the shortest, the roundest, the darkest, yet I'm articulate, educated, and quite well-versed. Um, I need people to understand what makes that up, okay? Um, all the little key components. And I am not ashamed of my past. I've never been ashamed of my parents. Because when you are ashamed of something, people use it against you, okay? So, my mother always told me, whatever you do in the dark is going to come to the light. Claim it. Put it out there so that people can't use it against you. I've been overweight my entire life. I don't let nobody use that against me. My parents have been addicts, one or both, my entire life. I don't let nobody use that against me. I claim mine. I put it out there because we're not doing no ransom. We're not doing no blackmail. We're not doing none of that over here. And when my head hits that pillow, I sleep like a baby. Because I'm going to put all my garbage right on out here, right? But that, that's how I live. There's some people who got a whole lot of secrets. I don't have no whole lot of secrets. I got less than five. And the older I get, I'm pretty much telling them. I think I'm down to about two secrets. Uh, hey, Veronica. Hey, Brian. Hey, Linda. Some of you guys I've definitely talked to offline. So I know that um, you know these stories. Hello, Natalie. Hey, John Johnson. How you doing? Uh, hey, ja oh, Jackie, I already talked to you. Linda Moore, girl. You know what? You still make the best pasta salad. Can you ship me some from Iowa? Huh? Can you ship me some? Hey, Juan. Hey, Tanisha. Hello, J. Renee, Leela Dotson, Ramona, uh, Pape. Hey, Pape. What's going on? Uh, let's see this. I think I might have reached a hey, Katanja. Hello, Paulette. So, everyone, good morning. And uh, I hope this helps your day. I'll see you back here another day with some else. Uh, hopefully it don't take me as long to get the courage up to talk about that as it took me to talk about this. Develop a dope fiend mentality and over and over in order to overcome what you're going through today. Have a good day.